Through the Noise by The Room. Uh, I know you just released a video for that song, too, and any time I watch it or listen to the song, it brings me to tears. It's just an amazingly beautiful song. So tell us more about it. 
Well, thank you very much indeed. That's, uh, that's lovely words. Yeah, it was. Uh, I mean, it, the whole uh, thing with my son was through the 2000s, and you know, I'd, I'd sort of more or less dropped out of uh, you know, sort of doing anything, anything musical because of the the treatment um, over the nine years, and I never really got round to doing what I do and just writing a lyric about the whole thing. But I didn't want to make it too in your face, if you like, about the whole uh, cancer piece, you know, the whole, um, mm. you know, the whole scenario. So I just wrote, I'd, I suddenly thought that, you know, the, the, the whole thing with my son doesn't really, it doesn't only affect him, but it affects everybody else as well, and especially my daughter, right. Alice. Mm -hmm. um, she was, uh, you know, a couple of years, uh, a few years older than Josh. So, and it was very difficult for her because all the attention was on my son, mm. and uh, she was getting, she was getting phased, phased out, you know, a little, um, um, which is probably probably natural um, because all the different right. treatments, different hospitals, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, I wanted to sort of, it's about both of them basically. Um, and also my wife Linda as well, and, you know. And I think it's about the whole family. Yeah, mate. I think it is. I think it's right. as well, man. Um, and so I just wanted to, to, to put a few simple words together, just to basically try and bring home the, you know, the the effect it had on, uh, you know, Alice in terms of that, you know, she'd sort of back off and be, you know, very distant um, sometimes, and um, also the way it affected Linda and you know and myself, I guess. Um, so, yeah, that's where it came from. Well, I know, you know, any disease will affect a whole family, uh, whether you're ready for it or not, and especially children, because the other children do not necessarily understand what's going on. Mm -hmm. And they may become standoffish, not because their uh, parents are not paying attention to them, but because they're afraid and they don't know what to think or what to say. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I've got to say, I mean, you know, the grandparents, uh, Roger and Anne, my dad, and, uh, you know, my mum, they did, you know, did, you know, very much, uh, you know, step up to the mark um, in terms of uh, supporting Alice whenever, you know, it was needed, whether she needed a little looking after, taking out or whatever. And, in fact, you know, the whole family, uh, you know, Susan, David, her, her aunt and uncle, et cetera, um, they, you know, um, and everybody, you know, st you know, steps up to the plate. But on a day-to-day -day basis, school days, you know, you know, we'd, we'd probably have to whiz Joshua out for some kind of checkup or something like that. Alice would get shunted off to somebody, and it'd all get, you know, it all got pretty messy at times. I can imagine her feeling kind of marginal, marginalised almost. Yes, that's and, a word. And um, if there's, you know, if there's a hundred percent share of love, she probably wasn't getting as much as no. she felt she kind of needed, and, yeah. and and the whole thing was really difficult for her. So yeah. uh, I think it's and difficult yeah. for you, mate, as well, yeah. I guess. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not I'm easy just, on just anybody, anybody. That's for sure. <laughs> No, for sure. um, just so our listeners are aware of what disease we're speaking about, it's called retinoblastoma, and it's a, an eye disease that children get um, relatively. I'm not sure if they're born with that or what, but I'm going to actually speak with Hunter about that, who we do have on the phone now. Um, she's an award-winning actress. Some of you, I don't know anybody who's out there that's listening, but you may know her from The Bold and the Beautiful and from various other movies and TV shows that she's done throughout the years. And uh, Martin and Hunter both have children by other people, not together. That we're touched by. I have been to I have been to Los Angeles two or three times, but I don't think we met. <laughs> <laughs> that were touched oh, by retinoblastoma, so we'd like to welcome Hunter on as well right now. So, hello, Hunter. <laughs> hello, hello, everybody. Martin, it's finally nice to meet you. Hi, nice to meet you too. Voices. <laughs> yeah, hi, Hunter. It's, and, and, it's Andy as well. Yes, we've only tweeted so far, so there we go. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Nice to meet you. But, thank uh, God for social media. To, uh, first, I, I, I just want to thank you, uh, your band, thank you, Martin, and all your guys for contributing such uh, a heartfelt, you know, it just took my breath away, just as Pam said, when I, when I first heard it, because it truly captures the passion of that parent, how you just wish you could 
fix it. You know, you, it's such a heartbreaking thing to see a, 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 a tiny infant go through and, and for it just to never feel like it's going to end. Yeah. Um, it is the only cancer that begins in the womb. It's uh, one of the most primitive forms of cancer, and it is related to breast cancer. It's a certain gene. Oh, um, wow. I saw Martin. Yeah, um, I saw Martin that you've got even, I guess, some of the newer information that it started from a virus that, you know, can actually, I guess, attack the genes when they're dividing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's the so, RB gene, basically, that's, uh, that's the, you know, that's damaged by, but it actually does, it does actually start in the womb. Um, yeah. And and it's very hard to de detect in 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 smaller children. I mean, Joshua wasn't really diagnosed until he was eighteen months, um, but the quicker you can get it, the better. Uh, but there's just there's no pain. There's uh, you know a, a, you know you don't see any change in that in their eyes. In most cases, some you do you see a squint or whatever, but in a lot of cases there's just there's just no difference until they start growing, um, and then you sort of get a cat's eye. It, it looks as though the pupil's transparent, at, especially at dusk. And right. um, you began to notice these things, but then you think it's just a trick of the light or something, and then it sort of develops from there. Hunter, hi, it's Andy. How, how, was, um, how was Katia diagnosed? Well, it was a similar thing. Um, we were. She was actually only three months old, which they said it was basically a miracle that uh, – hers was detected it was a similar situation we were in church and you know Sunday morning service and they dimmed the lights for prayer and her pupil opened and what the doctor told me later that I actually saw you know that milky white is sort of yeah. you see oh. it's like an illusion underneath mm. the black part of the pupil I was actually looking at the tumor her eye oh, was wow. already 85 percent full of tumor on the whole oh, back of her retina yeah, same. and it was right over the optical nerve, and the doctor said I couldn't have gotten her in there a day too late because no. um, it it only takes one cell to get on the mm -hmm. optic nerve, and it travels straight into the yeah. brain. And you know, once it's out of the globe of the eye, you're in real trouble. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, people just don't realize this is such a serious um, cancer that you know. Hopefully, that one day they'll unlock it because it would unlock all of the others because it is mm. such a primitive form of cancer. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if there's a, you know, in one way, if there's a cancer you're going to get, if you're going to get a cancer, then get RB because it can't get out of the eye unless it goes down the optic nerve. So your doctors can control it pretty well if it's not, not over the optic nerve. But if it's over the optic nerve, then you need to move quickly. Luckily, Joshua's were more at the front of the actual orb uh, itself. <clears throat> so... We were able to control it for, for you know very long long period of time, um, but you don't want to get anything near the optic nerve, or else it, it, you're in serious trouble. Because, like Hunter says, it's 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 a vicious cancer once it gets out, and it is it, um, very untreatable. Yes, it's the it is also in addition to that, it is the fastest growing cancer. Yeah. Um, I. You know, when she she was diagnosed on a Tuesday and she was in the hospital getting her eye removed on that Friday, mm. and it, it was just it, there was no time to even realize what was happening. I felt like I had just been picked up, you know, and literally just taken off into this black hole. <laughs> there was no no swimming yeah. out. And um, what I watched her go through was just you know horrendous and. You know, as you're as you're saying too, it it's a ripple effect through the whole family. It's just a wave of trauma, and uh, it it affects the child their whole life because you know they're you know they're they're at a developmental stage, which is so crucial as a baby. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure about your son, but like for my daughter Katia, it's been just ongoing um, help to keep her verbalizing talking about it, not becoming afraid of the smell of even rubbing alcohol from all the trauma in the hospital. Mm. Um, it's a lot of therapy. It's ongoing work to keep the child from withdrawing into themselves um, or or even, you know, it can actually have an effect of a child who's been abused physically. 
because right. the bottom line is the child has gone through something 